Okay. Okay. Sure. So, and uh, I will read from the screen here. And the first one is from Tina. And she says, uh, Dear Simon, thank you for your wonderful and tenacious work. I'm delighted to be part of CC Group Denmark and cannot thank you enough for initiating this unique platform. I gratefully embrace your kind opportunity to post questions relating to us in Scandinavia. Thank you. Bless and kind regards, Tina Mansfield. And the first question goes like this. I clearly remember walking the Scandinavian glaciers in a distant past, being guided by Mother Earth through ley lines and interactive fields emanating from my body and soul. Never alone, always connected to the field of togetherness. Have you got any information on Scandinavian ancient knowledge or and history that we can utilize in the transformation we are in? Yes, um, Dr. Amoto, God bless him, uh, is world renowned for working with water and showing that it could encode messages uh, and it had uh, the properties of development so if you um, well these experiments were many and varied and one experiment was he had a photograph of Adolf Hitler and placed that on a jar of water and when he froze the water the crystals did not form correctly but when he wrote the word love or happiness mm -hmm. that also formed correctly now in this individual's case and by the way I want to thank her for her support thank you to her for being in CC I uh, appreciate that, it's very kind of you and very good. Um, because of her experience, and she probably doesn't understand, she thinks of self as walking, the reality is that she will have been a consciousness uh, moving across. Uh, well, her, her own unlocking will be through ice. What she needs is a piece of ice from the she have you have to go a little bit away from the town. She needs a piece of ice from the glacier. She needs to have the time, and I don't know how she's going to hold this because she can't do it with any gloves. She has to have you touch it with the fingers, and she has to connect with it. What happens is the ice is a memory. It contains a crystalline water memory, and because she has a connection with. Um, that environment, this is how she will reactivate some of her own memories and connect. So she's not connected to people in the true sense, she's connected to Gaia, to the planet Earth, expressing itself through the northern hemisphere, through wind and ice and water and actually also the aurora. So she should be very drawn to the colors in the sky. This is the, the, the magnetic Earth's pull and the dust particles electrically charged. But ice, if she just touches gently a piece of ice and meditates, this is what she needs to do. And it can't be a piece of ice from the refrigerator. It has to be from a place that is thousands, hundreds of thousands of years old. She will have her own speeding up her own personal development. So what she actually was, was a, was a spirit or a guardian uh, traveling with the wind uh, over the, 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 the glaciers, over the rocks, looking at that part of the world, which is very special. So she has a connection to the planet as well as to people. I hope that's a good answer for her. Mm, nice. Okay, and it's still Tina who asks, um, Danish society has taken a turn for the worse over the last 10 years or more. Mm. Masculinization emanates every law, growth and efficiency seems to slowly drive humanism out of every aspect of society. Mm. Would you, if possible, explain how the new world order is implemented here and how we can counter outweigh this implementation? Right. The, the mistake that many people made was they saw the Scandinavian countries as so socially conscious, uh, high taxes paying for good social care, 
the, the understanding of the family, um, putting help into homeless people, putting into help to, to where the community needs it. And that was the pattern. And what happened about 12, 15 years ago was that suddenly something changed in all of the Scandinavian countries, not just one, not just Denmark, but all of them, including Norway, which is probably the driver for this, which is, I want the best motor car. I want the cleanest roads. Uh, I expect the very best. And becoming elitist. And so on one hand, you have a country that appears to be very socially concerned, but the reality is it's been hijacked. Mm. If this is the rocket taking off, someone has knocked it off course. And now it's all about material wealth. It's about being successful, um, being very proud of, of yourself. And what the New World Order have done is they've seen that as a weakness and played upon it. And they've said, yes, Scandinavia, very wealthy country, got all this oil. Um, here, look, buy this, buy that. So the adverts have been very clever. Governments, successive governments have, have made policies which have moved the emphasis away from the people, moved it to the corporations. You know, you, Scandinavia, Norway in particular has the wealth fund. Um, you know, there's a lot of very bad people who want that money to be invested in them. One of the key members of the Wealth Fund, I believe, is the chief executive of the Shell Oil Company. I think it's Shell BP, one of those two. Um, and they're saying, basically, oil's dead. We're going to have to invest the, 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 the fund in renewable energies. So what I'm saying is the people don't really control their money. It's the head of these big corporations. That's how much the Scandinavian countries and people have let go of their responsibility. I don't wish to be rude, but I have to wake people up. I have to alert people. They're more concerned about a scratch that big on the motor car than what's going on on a wider level. Um, I've never been, I'd love to go to Scandinavian countries, but I, I, I was told by a very close friend of mine that uh, in one place in, in Norway, uh, there's a, an underground shopping complex and the cars all park. And this person noticed like these blankets or these material cloth things hanging from the ceiling. And she asked somebody and said, what is that for? And the reply was, we don't want dirty water falling from the roof to touch our cars. Now, when you understand the concept that's going on there, that is that is how your communities have been changed. Because, once mind the joke about the scratch, that it is now more important to keep a dirty drop of water off somebody's car than it is to look at the bigger picture. That's the worry. What's happened is um, materialistically powerful countries can be hijacked. And if you're not careful as a community, the Scandinavian community, your spirit will be hijacked. What can we do about it? We can actually start to show that um, the finest motor car, the finest uh, electronic goods doesn't make for a good family, doesn't make for a happy family, doesn't make for a loved family, doesn't protect the family, doesn't, doesn't give you that warm feeling inside. If you're always chasing material wealth, you'll end up with a heart attack. So the way to deal with this is to say, these countries have gone off track, they need to come back, they need to be much more family orientated, much more to the values of the communities and the beliefs that we had, and that we shouldn't be completely taken over by slick adverts and stupid slogans. Um, and we need to look beyond just being successful, we need to be successful in ourselves. So it's a very complicated battle, but, but that's the overall answer. Uh, sounds good, hard to implement, but I will work with members in the coming months ahead to try to implement that so people can actually have something to grasp with and work with. Okay, thank you. I think actually that answer leads to the next question. That's uh, the last question from Tina. Mm. Is I live 
on an organic nine-acre farm with my older son. I'm self-sufficient with vegetables and cats. I have cats and chickens. I don't think she eats them. I know she doesn't eat them. She does. She I know. Doesn't I, know. <laughs> I, also do, I also do trauma-related therapy and healing as a source of income. I love what I do. However, my heart is on the land and with nature. I have an urge to start a community like an extended family, simple living and helping each other. I have tried to do so uh, in the past, but failed. Have you any thoughts on how I can best utilize the resources I have and be of service to uh, humanity? Right, we're in a 3D world and therefore we do have to understand there is some give and take. There is some energy give. It doesn't have to be money, but it does in some way because the end product system doesn't accept vegetables. You, you, you can't go, Tina can't go <clears throat> and say, I'm going to pay my taxes and I'm going to pay them with these, these, these vegetables, these carrots. How many carrots to pay my taxes? It doesn't work. But what we can do is say you have this plot of land. You want to, to survive, but you want to educate so if it's your land maybe you can sublet that land out so you could say you will rent to you this plot of land and you can grow your vegetables on it but here is a contract this is what you must be organic there's no chemicals no sprays um etc etc some people have got a big house and they then let rooms out to a, a what used to be called a commune we don't call it that anymore but a self-sufficient community there's lots of ways that you can do it you have to bring money into it because it's a 3d world money is not evil providing you use it for good purposes mm -hmm. so try to combine living and educating and again i can talk to tina on a one-to-one -one level for that so yes there's lots of lots of possibilities mm -hmm. very exciting option for her thank okay. you and then the next is from Philip. He says, Dear Simon, this is about angels. What dimension do they live in? That's the first one. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that there are four questions, short questions. Do you right, want so to the, answer first, the first question, yeah. yeah, we'll do the first question. Um, the true angels, uh, and there are angels, they really are but I, I cannot hold my hand up and say they have wings uh, I, I can't say that what I can say is there are divine beings that exist for good and the dimension is the twelfth dimension hmm. fallen angels there are fallen angels and they exist at the dimension to which they fall to um, Lucifer um, fallen angel, Satan, whatever you want to call, fell from the twelfth dimension, creation of source, fell to the fourth dimension. So fallen angels, whatever dimension they fall to and, and exist in, so we know that the, 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 the Satan is a fourth dimensional fallen angel. Okay. Okay. Next one. Yeah. Uh, how do you explain the work of an angel? Um, <clears throat> well, they don't see it as work. We see it as work because we work here on a third dimensional planet. They see it as uh, their creational role. They are sub-creators and they probably would turn themselves, if we were to convert it into an English language, which can be converted to the various Scandinavian languages, as a protector or a guardian. Uh, another word would be a director. So just as Tina um, directs her gardening and her crops and she looks after what she grows so the angels are tasked with um, maintaining the balance mm -hmm. and this is the point um, it doesn't mean the balance is always even sometimes the balance can swing really badly but an angel's job is to try and bring balance to protect what's good um, and to help certain individuals on the planet who are under attack. That is the job of an angel. Okay. And then he asks, um, it is said that a prayer from a human makes an angel helpful, but how does it work? I mean, 
if it works. Right. Well, Philip, obviously, the, the, I would just use a different word to helpful. Um, if you call on an angel for help, uh, if you're asking through love and truth, then the angel will probably answer that call. Uh, if you're being attacked by a, a demonic entity, then if you believe in entities that are good, then they will come to your call because they want to balance it. If you're being attacked by a demonic entity and you call an angel, it will come to balance. It isn't there to do all the work for you. It is there to balance it and then you yourself have to do the final bit of work. Yes, by all means, call on an angel, but don't do it all the time only when you really need that help. Okay. Actually, okay. that was the, all the questions from Philip. Um, okay. And then he says, thank you for being the way you are. Oh, well, thank you, Philip. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Next one is from Stefan. And um, he writes, headline constellations. Hmm. Um, the topic is, I expect the constellations in our galaxy to be visible as we see them here at Earth, at least from our local star cluster, without big changes. But what is the name of the constellation we live in? I assume our cluster forms a, const a constellation when seen from Orion's arm or Pegasus arm. Right. So, what the constellation we live in? Right. So, the question is asking, um, what are off-planet entities? What do other intelligences have their name? Um, I can't answer that simply because whenever I have had any interaction, they use human terms. There's no point in somebody talking to me from another world using uh, terminology or words that they know. I don't know because then they've got to translate them. So all I can tell you is that when I've been uh, in these conversations, they say that Earth and the solar system of Earth and the constellation that Earth is in, they call it simply part of the Milky Way. Mm. That's all they call it, part of the, well, sometimes they call it the river of stars that's one term they've used for me, but they always say Earth is so important that they don't need to talk about a constellation or a solar system. They just say Earth. So if somebody from Orion's belt was to have a conversation with somebody on the horse nebula, because there's the two things that's used there, they wouldn't have to say E seven two nine five six four two stroke three, or this they just say Earth, because everybody knows where the Earth is because it's such a unique place. They will have names. They certainly will have their own terminologies. But just as a Japanese person has a a term for somewhere, and someone from Denmark has a term for somewhere, why bother learning all of those? when everybody understands the word Earth? Mm. That's a good question. But because we are such a special planet, they all know it as Earth. Okay, okay right. And then he asks, um, if the white draconians have originated in Draco constellation, how do we slash they know? They could see their own cluster unless told or because they were far enough away to see home. Right. The Draco, the Draco system is not their home. Um, they readily accept that they don't know where their home was. Uh, a length of time ago, uh, hundreds of millions of years ago, that's how long ago we're talking here, hundreds of millions of years ago, something happened uh, and a an incredibly powerful force, I probably think it was God, literally picked up the whole, it's phenomenal this, the whole of the Draco 
community, the whole peoples, the whole world, and took them away and dumped them, dropped them into what is now the Draconis star system. They know that Draconis is not their home world. They have no clue where their home world is. Uh, they don't accept it as their home. They accept it as where they live now. But they have always been a, a star-faring race. They've always traveled, gone everywhere. They don't have a home. Their home is where their leaders are. So think of a Viking, a Viking saga. <clears throat> they have a home, <clears throat> then someone is disgraced. The leader goes with his retinue, his bodyguards, his people, and he sets up a new community somewhere else. There are stories and tales and songs sung of the old home, but the new home around that leader and the son of that leader, generally, that becomes a new focus, a new world, and a new saga is written, just in the same way that when the reptilians were pushed to Draconis, the new saga was written, and the old saga was forgotten because they didn't want to admit that something was bigger than them and had moved them against their will and shifted them, goodness knows how far. So we never know the truth. Now, when the reptilians look at other worlds, they're not interested in anything except what is valuable on that planet. And I don't care where it is, it's what's marketable on that planet. So the Draconis reptilians don't have an emotion and a feeling of home as most others do. Okay. Okay. And then he had a question about the 5G. He says, um, what do you think of this idea concerning 5G and its relationship to IA's, um, AI's ability to develop hive mind slash awareness. He, he um, brings on further, I have to scroll a bit down here. Okay. The biological side effects of wireless technology have been known from studies of transmission of radio waves and bandwidth since the 1970s and furthermore 2.4. 3, 5G, and I've now 5, 4G, and now 5G. 5G is ultra high frequency transmission that requires far more transmitters locally positioned. Mm. Um, I watched a video by a professor in microbiology and especially changes in DNA and cells. Mm vulnerability to microwaves. There are more than 100 studies published on side effects on human biology and exposure to microwaves. It is my clear intuition that focusing on the 5G itself will be more beneficial for us to wake up collective consciousness when people hear about the dangers that their children will be exposed to when using smart devices and ultra-high wireless transmissions. If we can make people question 5G because of its health hazards, then we get our real objective con uh, cornered as a positive side effect. What or how do you relate to this approach? Right, before we answer that, let's talk about 5G and its dangers. Um, there, are, there are two points to 5G. First, uh, it allows the very big business to make money in a way it's never done before. The expense to make sure that the Western world has 5G is billions, whether that's euro or dollars or pounds, doesn't matter, it's billions. These people who are paying this money are only doing so because they believe they will get this money back. They believe they'll get it back because they believe that everyone will use their smartphones and buy services and products um, which will be delivered to the smartphone at a much faster rate. So the only reason they're putting in all this money which is being built, which makes the, the phone masts, etc., is because they believe they're getting it back. Now that's the financial side of how it's happening. What's behind it? is something much darker that wants 5G. Um, he's right. It's a combination of reprogramming the DNA and 
uh, trying to put something that's not human into the human body so that something can live in the human body and then develop. This is artificial intelligence. An artificial intelligence um, consciousness can survive in 5G. It cannot survive in 4, 3 or 2G uh, simply because it isn't at that high enough frequency. 5G is, and if it can disrupt the human DNA, the object is then that this would be placed in. So that's the first thing, just to clarify that. Oh, the other thing is, it's not all about masts. Many of the masts will be dummies. 5G is going to be spread around the Earth by satellite. Areas that are difficult geographically will have masts, Areas that are relatively easy will be done by satellites. Um, the person that controls the companies of the satellites is in a very powerful position and we might be worthwhile doing some research to see who is responsible for launching the rockets. They've been launched in Russia actually. Um, a private company in Russia is launching these satellites. Who is paying for the satellites? What is their connection to 5G? That's where the detective work needs to be done. Right, on, the, on the, the, the medical side, we have a problem. Because if you stand up and you say 5G will give you cancer or 5G will do this, the system will say, are you a doctor? Where is your medical evidence? And then they will take the person to court and say they are spreading false rumors. The best way to deal with this is to not specifically say that 5G will kill you or 5G will give you this or give you that. Best thing to do is to show research of what microwaves do to living biological material and then suggest, you can't prove it, but suggest that's the case. And what we need are scientists, doctors, people who are working on 5G for their conscience to get strong enough for them to break ranks and say, I've done the research and I can tell you this thing is dangerous. Ordinary people, as it stands, won't be able to stop this. It has to come from the scientific community or governments have to be changed. Mm. Either one of the two, either governments have to change or scientists have to come forward and say there's a serious issue here mm -hmm. because the drive to make money is so great mm -hmm. that most of these countries will just push through these masts regardless of what anybody says because they have been promised a slice of money the real people behind the power are those who have a very very dark agenda behind it so uh yes the medical issues but don't make a mistake of getting caught and saying something you can't prove. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one is from uh, Nob Choris. You know him? Uh huh. Metzius is also his name. Yes. Mm. What does it mean if a person meditates and sees a layer of black tar around their own heart? Uh, this is black goo. <clears throat> um, it means it's been placed uh, by an energy in an energy form. Don't imagine real black goo around you. It's a replica copy of that. It's designed to um, prevent you from flourishing. It's designed to prevent your heart from um the heart isn't just something that pumps blood around your body. The heart has a very important role to play. And if you could isolate the heart and you sort of basically lock it up, that person is lacking, can't access that certain aspect, can't develop. So what you have to do is you have to find somebody who can um, take away the black goo around the heart without damaging any of the other parts. Uh, who's put that in there? That's a rhetorical question. It would generally be a human stroke alien uh, alliance. So it would be very bad humans, bad people working with 
alien technology and why would they do it they do it because they're frightened about certain people who could be a threat to them in the future we have to be careful because there's a native as a good black goo but that wouldn't be found around the heart someone is is if you had a a container of black goo and you could map it electronically you they have the technology to transfer that image into a physical body and to reform it in an energy around that. Now, if a person did an X-ray, you wouldn't see anything because this is not seeing a solid. But there are certain things, ultrasonic sound, you can't really put an ultrasonic check on your heart, but something that would um, uh, vibrate off the densities might show a clouding around the heart. But there are lots of good psychics who could take away that uh, that covering of your heart. That's why I suggest you do. Okay. And then the next one is from Pia. He asks, how can I find out where my soul was born? He means that where he had his first incarnation. Um, needs to speak to me and I'll be very happy to do what we call a soul reading. Um, I just ask a very few very simple questions, very simple questions, balance the energies and then would be able to tell him where his first incarnation was. It may not have been in a physical body but at some point it would have been. And I'm happy to do that so he just needs to connect with, 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 with Becky, uh, Rebecca and she will, will organise that for him. Then he writes, my partner is sensitive to electronic noise and things like that. In a world where there is so much going through Wi-Fi, 4 and 5G, etc. around our heads and bodies, even a lot that isn't ours to begin with, like from neighbors and mobile <coughs> antennas. So how can I shield her slash us in our home so she will sleep better and be less exposed to it and all that comes along with it? Right, so the first thing to do at night time is turn off your, your mobile or router system, the system that generates the Wi-Fi. So turn it off at night. Make sure all your, your electrical devices are on silent or, or airplane mode or off. Now to protect yourself from uh, the microwaves coming from other peoples and on the street, because many of these antenna are based on the street, now you've got to go on to the internet and you can find um, companies or small people, companies that are making a material like a cloth that you can cut and then you place over your doors and your windows. I know these microwaves pass through walls, but they pass through glass much easier. And if you can completely cover your bedroom, so your walls and the bedroom, then you are protecting yourself. Think how many hours you sleep and when you sleep, you're defenses come down you, your normal energy defenses are reduced so it's important to completely cover if you are sensitive your bedroom you can get these materials online do your research uh, and you could just literally cover that one room um, uh, and if you're in the front room your sitting room you could have curtains made of this material that is the way around it um, there are certain um, objects, sacred geometry objects, either as a model or a, or a picture which you can use. But the physical barrier of the cloth, this material that reflects or absorbs, that's your best bet. And there are places on, I mean, sometimes you've got to go to Russia online because they are more readily available outside of America than in America. Where the control system is, it's hard to get these things. But nevertheless, there are places. That's what you need to do. Yeah, I know that. In Denmark, you can't get a buck um, with a fluoride filter in. You can, right. you, you can only get it from yeah outside Denmark. <laughs> That's very interesting. And I'll cover that one as well, that um, on many of the boxes, they don't, that do do fluoride. They don't actually even say it stops fluoride. But when you go on the website uh, outside, of that country it actually says on the adverts that are carried elsewhere that it stops fluoride i have two here mm. um one i bought from america 
and one I bought here in Great Britain, mm-hmm. which guarantees to remove. Um, and now, if 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 the person would like to connect with me uh, and send me the money, I will buy it for them, and I will will post it to Denmark. Mm. We, we, we just bought one from the UK. Oh, you did get one from UK. Yeah. That's fine. Then. <laughs> good. Yeah. So, now the good yeah. because the, fil- the filters the filters are very expensive, but the filters in my one last for a whole year. Ah, they last okay. for a whole year. Okay. And, and they use a porcelain technology. The filters made of more of material of porcelain, um, and you can actually go to a puddle. You could go to a puddle in the road, put the water in it, and drink from it. That's how special they are. Yeah, okay. So uh, I think they're called. Well, if you hold on, I'll yeah, just go and yeah, get yeah, it, yeah. and I'll show it to you. Yeah. Okay, hold on. No. No. Right, this is uh, what it looks like. Yeah. And it's called Pro Pure. P R P U R. I'm going to just tilt it to the camera. Can you see that? Yeah. Pro Pure. That's it. That's I write it. it. I and I'll just open the Pro lid. Yeah. I'll open the lid, and then you can. Hello, Crystal. Hi, Becky. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. It's it's a, we okay. we and do have a lot of hot stuff. days in Denmark. So ah. Inside the filter sits upright. It yeah. actually screws in from the top like this. Yeah. So the filter is upright and you pour the water in, ah. uh, porcelain filter, you have to scratch it to break the surface and that filters through to the base here. Uh, it takes out aluminium, mercury, lead, it takes out all metals, it takes out fluoride, um, no wonder so many countries aren't allowed to sell it because uh, it, it's revolutionary. That's what you need to buy. It's not cheap, very expensive, but each filter lasts about a year. Yeah, wow. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I will, I will, we will check that out and I'll bring it further on as well out to the CC Fantastic. Group. And yeah. if there's any problems, come back to me and I'll help you sure. out a bit further with it. Thank you. Great. Okay, and the next one is from... Yeah. Knut Helge from Norway and he he uh, gives a background history first and then the question comes. Okay. Before the Black Death in Norway in 1349 AD there was a white culture in Norway that was forgotten in relationship to the Black Death. The Norwegian Vikings had started to Christian and bring in priests and missionaries to Norway in the decades of 900 to 1100 AD. Mm. My information is that in the beginning of the 1200 AD, in the southwest of Norway, there were several separate groups or villages of common peoples, farmers and fishermen, Vikings with slaves, Catholic or Celtic, Christianity and Qatar's refugees that has fled from persecution in France. The Albigensian crusade at Monsi Gut, 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 how do you pronounce that? You know the, I don't the know what word you're saying. <laughs> the, the the French mountain Monsi Gut, Monsi Gut in southern France. Montserrat, Montserrat. No, not Montserrat. M O N C S S E G U. A scarf. I know. I know what you mean. Yeah. Go on. In southern France was in 1244. The Qatars had its hall where the priests practiced their rites and did teaching. At one mm-hmm. point, the small Qatars group was wiped out by a local Viking scheme. However, mm-hmm. the youngest children survived and was integrated to the Christian group. 
And now comes the question. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some comments on this time of our history, the time before the Black Death? Um, first thing to say is that certain number of groups were susceptible to the Black Death and some groups were not. Uh, and genetically, uh, it's very interesting that a number of uh, the um, more susceptible groups <clears throat> were the ones that had been around a lot longer. The uh, more knowledgeable uh, individuals, whether they could trace back, right back uh, through maybe a thousand, two thousand years, they were ones that particularly suffered. Uh, there's been persecution through all countries, all times. That's nothing new. But what happened here was that a, a line of knowledge was extinguished. The church, I have to be careful what I say here, I can't say all churches, but many of the churches wish to remove the old knowledge simply because it, um, it feared it. Now, Cathars and others who had been not just in that part of the world, but in many parts of the world, were susceptible to this supposedly um, rat-infested Black Death, suffered with it. The church then came in on the back of this and used it to uh, control families, uh, break up families, particularly move children out of their communities where they uh, could have been looked after by perhaps a grandparent or somebody and move those children into the structure of the church. So I don't see them as separate. I see that the church uh, utilized a situation that allowed it to dominate. And the way they did it was by saying that um, you're guilty. That's why God has killed your family. You know, if you were good, you wouldn't have died. Because the, the, what they were open to, which would happen now, is people would say, if there was a God that you describe, why has he killed everybody? If God is good, why would he kill? So what the church got in quickly and said, the reason that your family died is because you're evil. But if you want to be saved, you need to come and join the church. So... That, that's what happened. It was deliberate. Um, and it's interesting, when I was maybe 11, 10 or 11 years old, in my first school, we call it first school in Britain, mm. uh, I had a, a, call it a religious education lesson. I was probably a bit, bit younger, I was probably about eight. And the teacher changed the rules. And this time the teacher said, what questions have you got? And asked us to ask questions and I put my hand up and I said I talked about Noah <clears throat> and I said I don't understand <clears throat> I said my exact words were <clears throat> if God so loved the world why did he send a flood of water down and kill everybody off okay that never got answered and, and never again was I ever asked to, to put my hand up <laughs> mm -hmm. the point is the church has often used situations for control mm. and the Cathars uh, uh, and and other groups uh, have often been um, hurt and damaged because of the knowledge they kept it's not just that country it happened in France it happened in Spain part of Italy remember Germany as well so don't just see it as a Scandinavian issue this has happened right across Europe mm. and the Jews as well um, whatever people may think of the Jews, they contained a very special knowledge of history that goes right back to ancient Egypt. And if you look at countries, it was illegal, remember, for Jews to work. You know, the bit that makes me angry is that people who are that way inclined say, don't like the Jews because they're in banking, or we don't like the Jews because they lend money. The reality was, it was the rules in Italy that forced Jews to, to be moneylenders. There was a rule in, in Italy that said that no Jew could run a business. But in the, in the law, it, it absolutely forgot or didn't mention lending money. So Jews 
found the only way they could work in Italy was by lending money. It was legal for a Jew to lend money. And this is where then all the attacks came from. So it doesn't matter whether it's Jewish, Cathars, Muslims. If a system doesn't like a group of people, it will try to control them and break them up. And the Cathars uh, were broken up because of their strong independence. Look at Portugal, Spain and Portugal. Look at, look at the, the situation, the Catalina district. It's just playing out again. It's a good question. Thank you. And um, here's another one. Um, that's also from Knut Helge. He asks, uh, in the Norwegian folklore, there are many histories about the under about. It must say about the underworld or peoples taking to the underworld or into the mountains. Mm. The entrance could be a nearby rampart or small hill close to a farm or mountainside. Mm. The peoples at the other side could be very similar to us or they could be the small peoples, small Nisse or the elf. Yeah. Many young girls and boys were taken to the underworld to marry it with promise of big wealth. They got mm. out again after big in the war. It is also stories, there are also stories about the underworld peoples helped us with the fight against the Swedes. Mm -hmm. All this activity seems to stop in the mid 70s, 1700. Mm -hmm. My question is, why did this connection between the world stop? And is it a dimension that difference that separate our two worlds? It stopped because the consciousness of humanity through technology moved to a point that um, humans were being moved away from their connection to the earth. The printing press had started maybe 250 years before, <clears throat> but the books had only just become readily available from about 1700, 1750. And it wasn't until 1850 that books were uh, readily available so what happened around the time that he's asking was that people were able to read history or supposed history in a book rather than ask the village elder so people would then come in to an area and say um, what's it like here and they would say well there's a, there's a, a cave up there and there's a, a troll a troll that lives there um, or the elves come out and they, they look after the field here and sometimes we take our children and they can marry the underground people and they people say well that's not in this book this is all fairy tales this is nonsense the book tells the truth the book tells the history and when humans consciousness stopped believing in uh, the reality of their own eyes and started to believe in the reality of the law that is the division between people and the planet doesn't mean the planet doesn't love the people but it means that humans generally their brain doesn't register what their eyes see so here's an example when the Spanish conquistadors Don Cortez and all the others when they arrived in South America they arrived by sailing ship. The local people, whether they were Incas or Aztecs or Mayans, the local indigenous people had never seen a ship with sails like that before. And it is recorded in history that the local South American native people stood along the shore and their eyes saw the ships, but their brain had no knowledge and they couldn't have a word, they couldn't have a framework, they didn't know how to express it, so they stood there and they couldn't talk. Now, if you take somebody today and you show them an elf or an ogre, they won't believe it because their brain has no concept. What it will do is a Hollywood film, a children's fairy tale, a story to scare children so they're not going to be bad children. They don't accept it as real. And this division started around about 1720 to 1730 
I forget the date that he spoke of, but between 1720 and 1730, the energy shift began to take people away from the belief. But there are communities like in, in, in Ireland, in, in southern part of Ireland, where right up to the 1950s, people were still seeing a fairies or elves and connecting with them. Societies that have kept the world out, have kept fairly pure, have stayed longer. But of course, science comes in, people come in, and so those old ideas, those old values are destroyed and the system is squashed. So that's what happened there. Okay. Okay. And then it says, thanks for all help and information to understand of the time we are in now. Ah, oh, well, I thank him. Thank him for being part of Connecting Consciousness. It's very important. Thank mm. you. And this one is from Elizabeth. She says, um, I became a member after hearing about Simon Parks on YouTube. <laughs> I was recommended by a friend to join CC when I missed a network. I missed a network of people who are equally open to the fact that the world we live in is not as we think. Hmm. You, Simon. Uh, no, sorry. You, that's, that's about herself. You get a little despair when nobody around you understands what one talks about. It is particularly concerned with what is happening here in Scandinavia and especially Norway slash Bergen. We mm. are an incredibly close society while the world yeah. around us opens more and more. Why? And what about 5G? How will we notice that it is being tested over Norway? And why here? Yeah. Right, we've answered some of that, but what yeah. I will say to you is that, that you would expect one of the most beautiful environments on the planet, which is Scandinavia, and in particular Norway, one of the, those special places in the Scandinavian group. Why is so much done there? And the reason is that the Scandinavian peoples are some of the most highly evolved spiritual people on the planet. So if you're a bad person, that's where you want to attack first. No good attacking in Africa because it won't make any difference. So what they'll do is they'll go for the places that have the most high vibration. I'll give you something else here, which which you, perhaps if some of your members can do some research for me would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Scandinavia, or there are some towns or districts in Scandinavia, uh, in particular Norway, that are having uh, forcing newborn babies to be inoculated or vaccinated. There are people in, in Norway who are selling their house and moving because they do not want their children to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to find out about that. So why is a government in, in a country like Norway, which is supposed to be so advanced, so caring, so, so, so wonderful, forcing people against their will. And what the government says is, we know better than you. You're, you may be the parents of those children, but you, you, don't, you don't make decisions for those children anymore. We are the government and we'll make decisions. That's what's happening. Mm. And people need to, to realize that they are losing their control on their authority over their own children. So it's not so surprising then if that is the law in some parts of Norway, that 5G is being placed as well. So why are they doing this? Why would they want to vaccinate people with, with, with chemicals? Why would they want to bathe you all in 5G? It's because you are very special people in Scandinavia. And if they can stop you, they can stop anybody. That's why. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one is from Eva Justin. She says, we have a mini core built in Lund and it is very quiet about it. It's in Sweden. It also has 666 in its lock, just like the big one. What I like to ask Simon is if you know 
uh, if you, Simon, knows anything about this core they are building outside Lund, and if so, do you know its agenda? Right. The, the terminology we're using, uh, because obviously she's translating from her own language into English, she's using the word core. Is that the word that you, you have in front of you? Core? That, that's core. I, I, I myself, I was wondering about it because core is what we call can. It's the middle of something. Right, but, I was trying to understand. But I think she, she might, she might uh, mean collider or... Yes, right. Yes, what she's meaning is a device that's being tunneled through underground. That's what she means. Yeah. I understand. Yes, um, what they've decided <clears throat> is they want to build several smaller devices. They cannot expand the major collider. They're trying to build smaller devices and then hope that those smaller devices, when all working, are equal to a big device. So the reason it's got the 666 is because it's, it's totally demonic. It's all about evil energies. Uh, it's about the devil. It's about fourth dimension. Okay. Um, that's right. I mean, uh, it runs through everything. The, the company that were the architects all those years ago that built the Twin Towers, the two towers that, that tragically came down and killed all of those poor people, the architectural company that, that designed the Twin Towers was a big office block on a high street in America and its number on the, on the, on the front of the, of the office was 666. It was number 666 of those office blocks. Whenever we see the number 666, you know that something evil is trying to make a connection. Yeah. And when you see 666, it means it's a network, like a spider's network. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she's right to raise that. I'm yeah. glad that she spotted that. Yeah. Thank you. And actually, I think I, I had to check with the um, with the uh, Eva Justin if we had it right because she says light and love, and your question, um, your answer is important to me. So okay. I will follow that up. So so. Um, Thank you. So uh, so we're sure that she gets the right answer. Yeah. Thank you. And then the next one is from uh, Birgit. She says, Thank you, Simon, for all good you have done. I wonder about the ancestry of the Nordic Scandinavian race. Who were the people in these countries after the Atlantean flood? Any uh, connections to the Atlantis? Our Asia and Venia so called gods? Her beginnings from around the Black Sea and came here later. But before mm -hmm. that, we had giant goddess and ma uh, matriarchal society. Mm -hmm. Who were they? <clears throat> yes, you've answered your own question, my love. You've got it spot on. The, the people of the Scandinavian worlds were survivors from Atlantis. <clears throat> Atlantis was a matriarchal community and the survivors created that divine feminine uh, on several continents wherever they could <clears throat> but um, if we think about the map of the world uh, Lumeria was where uh, where Australia and New Zealand is today where Europe is was Mu Africa was always Africa and Atlantis stretched from America to Ireland. Now when it collapsed, water was the main route way. Water was the way to get across. It was relatively easy from Ireland to move across past England and get to, to, the, to the Scandinavian area. So most of the people were blue-eyed, blonde-haired, white-skinned and quite tall. Those are your direct descendants from Atlantis. What happened was that a more of a, a reptilian god, and that's where Thor comes from, and one of these, these, these are um, uh, a Scandinavian Germanic gods come from, and this was imposed upon the uh, race. The Viking period 
is the dividing line between the Atlantean uh, fall in terms of the feminine and the rise of the masculine. So when it changed to male warlike environments and and the, 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 the warlord and the, 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 the honor and the strength, it changed and became masculine and, and the Atlantean culture was pushed down and so this created itself and this is why even today um, the negative forces have a great interest in Scandinavia because it contains many powerful energies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then there, there are two left. Okay, let's do them. Mm -hmm. And it's still from um, Birgit. She asks, before the Ice Age melted in Scandinavia, there was there were areas around the coastline of northern Norway and Sweden free from ice due to warmth from the Gulf Coast. Remains mm. from people have been found here from around 10,000 BC. Mm -hmm. Who were these people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> I think the dates are slightly inaccurate. Um, uh, the Ice Age generally by by 10,000 was the melt was well underway the ice age proper we could say began to um, the temperature began to change about 13,000 years ago the ice age was from 25,000 years ago to 13,000 years ago the remains of people found must predate 25,000 years old so the the, the the people that are being found are at least 25,000 years, probably 50,000 years old. Where are these people from? Uh, they will be from uh, Atlantean civilizations. They will be from small Nordic type groups that have gone off in groups of 20, 30, 40, 50 people. Um, they was a flourishing trade by boat. Scandinavian people are very good with boats and have been for a very long time. We know from ancient maps that uh, part of Antarctica did not have ice on it. We know that the poles have, have not always been as they are now. So if there's land, other people will have colonized it. So I can't say <clears throat> which city uh, or which country these, these, these bones have come from. But what I can do is give you a time frame that they are at least 25,000 years old and probably older. Because they were covered with the ice, then around about, it was actually, it's going to be silly because I'm only arguing 500 years, but 10,500 years ago was the turning point when there was areas without ice. By 10,000, 9,000 BC, many more open parts were just expand the question a little bit uh, the, the, the story of um, the ark and Noah uh, where well, there's truth in that there is really truth in it and at least the professional uh, archaeologists and biologists agree that what we could loosely call the Holy Land that the uh, first crops after the Ice Age were not planted as you would expect you expect the plants to be in the valleys and today it's the lush green valleys that are planted and the hills and the mountains which don't have anything much on them but what they've shown is that it's the opposite that the hills and mountains were planted at about 10,000 9,000 BC by about 6 to 7,000 BC they planted the lowlands that is because the meltwater as the water came down, they could plant in the high ground, but they couldn't plant in the valleys because it was still flooded. This is a proof of the flood. And this is a proof that people came back quite quickly, but were planting. Now, the big question is, where did that technology come from? Where did the technology come from to uh, create corn and maize? And the lies that are told, because if you get history books, official history books they say well what happened was 
um, people sorted through the seeds and they found the seeds that were better and over a period of time they took wild grass and they made corn that's nonsense these are these are hybridized plants you know we have to accept that you cannot take a wild grain of grass which is effectively what these things were um, and create something that's edible and make bread out of it some technology was around and there is proof that there was a flood that humanity did settle on the higher levels and come down and in the same way the landscape in Scandinavia was altered um, and there was a time when there was less ice then there was a time when there was more ice and now there's a time when there's less ice it's beginning to follow the cycle it's a fascinating subject thank you for bringing the question up okay and actually she has a, an extra question here okay and then i have one in the end then i will have to go after that yeah simon you have mentioned there were a difference between the vikings and their gods so who were the Asian gods, Odin or Wotan and Thor? Thank you. Thank you right. Um, if, if we go back, Babylon, Sumeria, the, the very gods that you just mentioned uh, are these same gods with a name that remember i talked about the masculine power that wanted to crush the feminine wanted to crush the matriarchal the way to do that was to enhance the masculine so thor's hammer thunderbolts coming down the sword the strength of the sword in scandinavian and germany the, the importance of the sword it was to um celebrate the masculine and to push the feminine to bearing children and so the, that means the gods were patriarchal, the gods were masculine. The way do we have gods that are masculine? Well, it didn't come from Atlantis, it came from the other side of the, the earth, which is the old gods of the Bible. As hard as it is to, to comprehend, the same gods that had been in power in Babylon, Sumeria, to a lesser extent Egypt, certainly um, uh, in, in, in places like Israel, um, Persia, those gods moved across, they were fully uh, taken to in the Scandinavian countries and then from that to the South Americas, is Aztecs, Peru, uh, Incas, sacrifice cult, wherever you get a sacrifice cult you've got a patriarchal reptilian environment and then that was about 14, 15, 1600 and then from there to Africa, to the Zulu, Zulu tribe in Africa. It's the same god and gods going from one community to the other uh, with the masculine uh, die and go to Valhalla. Die and go here and everything's fine. So that's where that's all come from. Okay. Yeah, good question. Thank you. And then um, I Hang just on, want to... Hang on, just shut the door to the dog's party. Hold on. That's it. That's fine. Dog, dog, okay. dog. Next door, next door. Dog was bucking. Go on. <laughs> it's calling. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Next door. Okay. Go on. Um, I I just want to read some background uh, sure. history, Simon, to get the connection. So it's sure. my question. Okay. In 1978, the German teenager Dirk Hammer was shot accidentally by the Italian crown prince, the Prince of Savoy, and Dirk died after three months in coma. Short after his death, both his parents were diagnosed with cancer and his father, Dr. Ruger Gerd Hammer, who a few years after worked onto oncology, started his research leading to the discovering of the specific biological program showing that, except of poisoning, there is always a connection and synchronicity in the so-called diseases and conflict shock, also triggered traumas. His findings called German New Medicine was proved by the establishment, but instead of releasing his findings of this powerful self-healing as natural laws to the public, 
The elite hunted, arrested and sent him in jail because he denied when they wanted him to withdraw his findings. Mm -hmm. Since then, when I look, that's me, into the many documents, including Hamas' own documentation, written communication with several authorities, the same group of the elite that recommend chemo with a highly rate of death to the rest of the world is recommending the research of Dr. Hama with a very low rate of death among their own. Dr. Hama was tried, shot and poisoned at several occasions and he went in exile in Norway to get outside uh, EU where he lived in Sanofjord until his death July 2nd, 2017. Now the question comes. Hmm. My curiosity goes on the connection behind the scenes that leads me to this. Whatever the aspects of elite energy that the Italian crown prince represents and his actions, hmm. could there be a deeper connection of genuine light and contract between the souls of Dirk, his father, and the Prince of Savoy in favor of the bigger truth to slash in humanity to be revealed? I can't genuinely answer that because that is only something that God or Source could answer. What I can say to you is that <clears throat> often when an individual uh, has something that would do two things, one is change the world that invariably means somebody's not going to make any money. And what they will do is uh, destroy the whole family. They will kill the whole family uh, because they want, want to make an example to others also um, to follow their lead. In other words, if somebody invents a device that means you don't need any more electricity, the establishment would want to buy that product. If you don't sell it to them, they will kill you. Uh, so that there's a warning to everyone else who should invent something like that, that you need to sell it. Now, uh, it's interesting what you say because the elite will say to the ordinary public, this is what you do when you're ill. Mm. But they will say something completely different to their own people. Mm. Um, one person I worked with uh, a long time ago to help her, uh, her father worked for a very powerful family and was given 20 million euro, and this is maybe seven, eight years ago, 20 million euro to build vitamin factories. But the vitamins were just for the elite. Mm. So there is a two stage approach, two speed approach, like in Great Britain, we have what used to be called first class trains and second class trains. Now they're called first class and standard class, because they don't want to make it very obvious. Mm -hmm. Just as in every other way, there is two forms, the special, the rich, the elite, the powerful have a way, and everyone else has the second way, the second class way. Now, I would imagine that uh, he was killed and his family were killed because they were a great threat. But when things happen, sometimes the people who are doing it don't realize there is a greater force involved. And we do believe in circles or figures of eight. And the energy can come back and suddenly it's in people's face. The ordinary people who have to make a judgment and a decision. Um, there's a lot of this going to come in the next two years, uh, right across the globe. Mm. People are going to be faced with things they cannot hide, they cannot run away with, and they must decide whether they're going to be free or whether they're going to stay being a slave. Mm. Um, and something as important as that, uh, I don't believe that Source or the Great Creator would allow that just to go down into the dust. I think it will come back and it will be used as a flag, uh, just another flag to people to say, how many more flags do you need to see before you realize what is happening to you? Yeah. So I can't personally answer it because I, I'm not God. I can't understand that. But what I can say is I see this happening elsewhere where something happens, which is terrible, terrible. But 
it triggers a response. The Twin Towers is a good example. They could never do a Twin Tower again. Nobody would believe them. So sometimes some things happen that are so shocking that it shakes people up and makes people um, more more questioning. So I, I think on balance, yes, I would agree with you. Actually, I know that uh, Dr. Hammer, he was, uh, he was getting this uh, question about doing the research from the soul of Dirk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He met him well, that during great. the night, night time in, in that, uh, dream travel. Yeah. Well, that seems to so confirm So that was the son uh, that, that uh, told him that yeah. try, that try, and he kept on doing that uh, during yeah. some years, and then all the research came to the light. In the end. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's lovely. Listen, I have to go because I've not yeah, had anything to eat. And thank I come you very much, to Simon. Oh, and um, and we, um, yeah, we will make this video and uh, put it, I think okay. it will be well, on, on YouTube. And then. Um, well, what just, I want to say, what I want to say is, yeah. first of all, you very kind of you to thank me, but I want to thank every member in Scandinavia member of CC and those people who are yet to join CC. Thank you for, for believing in what you do, which is believing in humanity, believing in the truth. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for giving up your time. And thank you for caring. Um, and that's what it's all about. So God bless everybody. Um, we'll get there in the end. We just have to never give in, never surrender. Just keep on doing it until the battle is won. Thank you. And don't don't forget to look at the new homepage. It's I, I, I've it's had it now. on my list. Yeah. I will look, I'll probably look tomorrow because yeah. I'm a bit tired now. <laughs> God bless. Love you okay. all. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.